Joining today MP Garner Genius. MP Garner Genius is conservative MP from Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan riding of Alberta. He is also the shadow minister for international development. Today we shall be talking about Senator Julie's Build S210 Protecting Young Persons from Exposure to Pornography Act. Thank you very much sir. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be to be with you again and uh, have the opportunity to share about this important piece of legislation as well as some of the, the other things we're doing in Parliament. Thank you very much. I really appreciate for your time. The House of Commons completed its second reading on December 13, 2023. Did you vote for this bill? Yeah, yes, I did. And, and uh, you know, I'll tell you a bit about why, why this bill is important. You know, sometimes there are there are issues that are having a, a big impact on our country, um, but they're 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 outside of the public eye, and 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 but areas where we need to talk about them and take action. So we we have this serious problem of young children, uh, young boys in particular, accessing violent sexual material online, and this shapes how they perceive uh, and relate to uh, others, and it. it the research shows that it, it has an effect in terms of wiring their brain, their expectations, and what they see as, as being appropriate and normal. Um, the, the average age of uh, young boys accessing sexual material online is, is age 11. Um, and and um, exposing young children to sexual imagery is, is a form of child abuse, yet, it, it, yet it's, it's so common that people are accessing uh, this, uh, this, this material. And it's happening because we don't have any laws in Canada requiring meaningful age verification. Uh, and if you think about it, gambling, alcohol, we, we have mechanisms already that if you're accessing these things online, you have to provi uh, provide uh, proof of your age. And the same should go for this kind of... Um, uh, of sexual uh, material. It seems like a no-brainer that if we already have the processes and mechanisms in place uh, for um, you know, tobacco products, alcohol, gambling, then we should apply them in the case of, of, uh, of uh, pornographic material as well. Uh, this, is, uh, this is very often material as well uh, that it, it's not just depicting sexual encounters, but that it's, it, it includes uh, high levels of, of violence, uh, degrading, hateful actions in the context of, of, of sexuality that, that really wires people's expectations. And as a consequence of that, we're seeing an increasing instance of child-on-child of -child sexual abuse. And this is, this is a growing and, and really tragic phenomenon uh, where, where sexual abuse happens against children by other, perhaps, perhaps the same age, perhaps older children. Uh, who are uh, imitating things that they see depicted uh, in, in pornography. And it, it's difficult for parents to protect their kids from this. You can, you can try to have some kind of monitoring at home, but then when kids go to school, maybe, maybe other kids have uh, devices or kids are, are accessing computers in other places. Uh, maybe kids are showing things to each other on their phone. So uh, we need to support parents, protect kids by requiring meaningful age verification. Uh, and that's what Bill S210 is all about. That's why um, it's, it's so important for me to support that bill and to promote it. So why did m uh, most liberal MPs, uh, uh, we find their numbers almost 133, voted against the bill? Yeah, so, so this was kind of a, a rare instance in Parliament where you have Conservatives, NDP and Bloc voting together in favor of a bill. A bill um, uh, this was a bill that was unanimous in the Senate, actually, so supported by many uh, senators who had been appointed by Justin Trudeau and who vote with him most of the time actually supported this bill. You had all of the opposition parties come together and some liberals. So there was a, a fairly large consensus around the importance uh, of, of the issues, as, as, as people might expect. Uh, but actually the Liberal cabinet and most of the Liberal caucus in the House of Commons voted, voted against it. and. Um, you know, so so what's the explanation? They they said they were voting against it on the basis of some technicality, saying, "Oh well, uh, we're going to bring forward our own bill later." It doesn't make any sense. If, if you're going to bring forward your own bill later, you you know you might as well support this bill that because it, it's an urgent issue and and you know if there are te technical issues, you can you can talk about or propose those. But what we also know is that a, a, a liberal insider 
who was uh, who, who was lobbying on behalf of the pornography industry, um, met with um, a senior liberal, liberal uh, in the immediate lead up to the vote. Uh, so we have indication that there was some lobbying happening, um, and and uh, actually the one of the world's biggest pornography companies a company that has been under a lot of scrutiny for failing to protect children, even for having material on their website that shows children in, in, in sexual situations, um, that, that company is headquartered here in Canada. Uh, and uh, so I think we have a particular responsibility in Canada to, to address this issue and protect children because one of the largest um, companies that are purveying this content is, uh, is based here. So um, the, the Liberals had their, had their excuse for it, but we know they were lobbied on it as well. A and then, uh, look, from a, from a basic ideological perspective, Conservatives believe that we ought to protect children from this material. And, uh, and, and we don't believe that, um, that it's acceptable to allow a situation in which children can, can access uh, sexual content online. So there's that philosophical question, but there's also this behind the scenes lobbying that happened that is quite concerning. Thank you for giving us uh, that insight. Uh, and this is very interesting to know that how the lobbying is working uh, against uh, a bill which is very vital, mm -hmm. as you said, uh, for our uh, youth uh, future. So Heritage Minister uh, uh, called Bill S-210 fundamentally flawed. How would you respond to her remarks? Well, well, I would say what's fundamentally flawed is that we have a situation in Canada where um, young boys, 11, 12-year-old boys, are, are uh, able to access violent sexual content online, uh, that that is wiring and shaping their brains in terms of their, their attitudes about what is normal and appropriate in sexual relationships, and that we're seeing an increase in sexual violence uh, in, um, in uh, children that have seen these kinds of images that are then um, acting out aspects of what they are seeing represented in, in, uh, in these images. And um, it's, it's tragic that this happens. Uh, deeply concerning, I think, to, to most Canadians, certainly to most Canadian parents. Um, we, we, uh, on, on every other issue, um, we, we have the idea of protecting children from uh, behaviors that are going to, to shape their lives, from, from going down dangerous roads before they really have the capacity to understand those risks. Uh, and it, yet in this particularly pernicious area, we don't have the legislation protecting kids. So I would say the current reality that, that, that has persisted for far too long, that's what's fundamentally flawed and, and we need this legislation to pass quickly. But further to it, uh, some legal experts also call it a poorly drafted bill. They even say it's likely unconstitutional and would also block access to websites unrelated to pornography. Did you study the bill? And how do you evaluate the bill as well as the criticism on it? Yeah, no, I, and I appreciate the question. But so you go back and look at the legislative process, right? Uh, th this was a bill that was proposed in the Senate, and it was unanimously passed in the Senate. Now there are a lot of legal experts in the Senate, people from from a wide variety of backgrounds. The Senate actually uh, skews, I think, more towards the the liberal side of things. There are there are not as many conservative senators left because most of the, uh, you know, many of the previous conservative senators have hit the, the age of retirement and there are many, um, uh, many, many appointees have, have come from the liberals and yet the Senate was unanimous in, uh, in supporting this bill. They did the, the study and the analysis work. Uh, they heard from the many experts that were in favor of it as well as from people that were, were critical. And look, some people are critical for ideological reasons, and, and they say, well, if there's, if there's even a scintilla of a risk that, um, that there could be, uh, you know, some, some privacy breach, then we, then we shouldn't provide this protection. But the way the, 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 way the, the bill works is that um, 
that the companies are responsible for undertaking meaningful age verification. So the companies providing this have a responsibility to, to have meaningful mechanisms in place to verify the ages of those that are accessing uh, sexual, sexual content. And uh, obviously those companies have an interest in protecting the privacy of, of people who provide that age verification. The concern is that, okay, if, if, if somebody has to provide age verification, does that mean that there, there's a risk that their name will get out that they've been accessing this material? Um, but the companies have an incentive to ensure protection for, for, for privacy. We have age verification mechanisms in, in, in other areas. And... Uh, and look, there's also an evaluation of harms here, right? What's the greater harm here? Uh, that that people say, okay, maybe there's a, a scintilla of a risk of, of some data breach over here. But on the other hand, you have uh, the, the overwhelming present reality of so many kids being exposed to this material, the harm that's causing, the consequences of that for... Um, uh, for for sexual violence uh, against people that that they may be interacting with after consuming this material, uh, my priority is protecting kids and uh, and combating the the epidemic of sexual violence that we're seeing uh, and 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 stopping child abuse. Sh showing this material to kids is a form of child abuse, so stopping that should be our priority. So you just mentioned uh, an issue in this bill: age verification. So a news report says that MPs themselves admit they are not exactly sure how this age verification system would work in practice. Well, to, to that I would say, I mean, we, we need to, to note how other countries have, have done this and have, have deployed mechanisms of age verification. Um, and we're talking about like-minded countries, so France and Germany have age verification requirements. The UK has just passed a law. And I don't, I don't think those countries are any less concerned with uh, the protection of, uh, of civil liberties. Um, I think uh, we, can, we can look to their example. Uh, having legislation that requires age verification uh, means developing the mechanisms that, that, um, that, that simply require that you have to be able to prove your age. And, and I think the, the principle is if someone's accessing violent, degrading sexual material online, I don't want that person to be an 11 year old. And so if a company is going to offer that material, they need to find a way of confirming that the person on the other side uh, is, is an adult and not a minor. Um, but I, I, I think the technology exists and other countries' experience points to the, this, uh, that it, it can be done and it, it needs to be done. Your colleague, Conservative MP Karen, admitted during the debate that she was not sure how to verify pornographic users but trusted the state but trusted the standing committee on public safety and national security could brainstorm some good ideas could you tell our viewers more about on this issue yeah so uh the process now is uh, the bill passed at second reading it will go to the standing committee uh, and uh, then hopefully re return back to the House for a, for a final vote. Um, but, but I think the fact that other countries have, have done this, that there are tools and mechanisms in place, and that the bill is flexible. The bill says you have to do age verification. Uh, but but there, are, there are different mechanisms by which age, age verification happens, and, uh, and I think it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's eminently reasonable uh, to have that flexibility while requiring that it, it occurs. Um, so so uh, the process of the bill, though, is that it, it will come back likely for a third reading vote. And I would encourage uh, your, your viewers to engage with their MP about this bill uh, because this is a crisis. It is, it is a crisis in this country that young boys are accessing uh, this material and that, that is, it is a form of child abuse and that it is contributing to abuse and violence against children. And simply requiring age verification is a way of protecting, protecting our kids. We, we want to see pressure on liberal MPs and on MPs of all parties to support this critical piece of legislation and, and uh, to get it passed. So as the parliament returns in the next couple of days, what would be the fate of the bill since liberal 
most liberal MPs have voted against it. Well, they don't have a majority in Parliament, so uh, on many issues, of course, we see the NDP Liberal Coalition uh, in, in place. Uh, but this is a unique case where uh, where the NDP have so far sided with us. So, so the bill has majority support and it now will work its way through through the rest of the legislative process and I hope uh, become law. But it's going to depend on the actions uh, that, uh, again, that people take contacting their MPs, sharing this, this information with their, with their friends and family, uh, helping to get uh, Bill S210 over the line. So as the parliament returns in the next couple of uh, days, what else do you anticipate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, we are going to continue to uh, highlight the, the economic failures of the government, uh, to call on them to axe the carbon tax, uh, to make life more affordable for Canadians, uh, to, um, uh, to support more housing construction or by removing gatekeepers. Uh, there, there is a, a general sense, I think, that after eight years of Justin Trudeau uh, and, and after the policies of the NDP Liberal government, uh, that we are, we are much worse off economically. There is much less hope in terms of, of opportunity and prosperity uh, than, there, than there used to be. Um, uh, so this, this is going to be a major focus for us. Um, over, over the break, we, we saw more liberal scandals. There have been more revelations in the, uh, the Arrive Can uh, affair. Um, there's the, the Prime Minister uh, taking an expensive vacation, staying for free at a, um, at a, a you know, luxury place in Jamaica. And uh, so these are you know, the continuing pattern of scandal and luxury on the part of the government while many Canadians are suffering economically. Uh, so that alongside other issues that come up will, will certainly be our focus. Is Conservative Party planning to press Prime Minister uh, what he did uh, uh, in terms of uh, imposing emergency act? Well, yeah, so I was <laughs> glad, glad you mentioned that. I mean, of course, the, uh, the court ruling uh, was a, a real victory for human rights and civil liberties in this country. Um, the Liberals have said they'll appeal it, though. Unfortunately, they're they're not ready to learn the lesson yet. Uh, their their use, the court ruled, of the Emergencies Act uh, was unconstitutional. It, vi it violated the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and it was not in keeping with the the framework uh, uh, of the Emergencies Act. So. Um, I think obviously this this is an issue, but it but it speaks to a wider pattern of behavior as well, which is a government that does not uh, respect the fundamental rights of Canadians. Uh, I think you can see kind of a link between this and and other attacks on fundamental freedoms, uh, efforts at uh, media control and online censorship with uh, with Bill C eleven, um, and uh, so so this. This, this constellation of issues around fundamental freedoms will, will continue to be a central priority for us as well. So finally, I would like to ask you, uh, Conservative Party and uh, sometime other parties also press Prime Minister to resign mm. over all those scandals and uh, issues. So uh, what do you anticipate uh, from precisely Conservative Party in next session Yeah, in well, terms of putting pressure on Prime Minister? Yeah, well, uh, we think Canada needs a, a new prime minister, and that prime minister should be uh, conservative leader Pierre Polyev. Uh, that, is, um, uh, that is why we have consistently uh, voted non-confidence in the government. Uh, in the fall, I think it was, it, was, it was several hundred times we voted non-confidence in the government. Uh, as long as the NDP continues to team up with the Liberals and we continue to have this NDP Liberal uh, coalition where the NDP is providing confidence to the government, uh, then, they, then they have a, a majority of Parliament. And the NDP Liberal approach uh, is, uh, is clearly not working and you can, I think you can see that reflected in, in public sentiment. So we want to see a new prime minister, a new government, and we have uh, been clear about voting non-confidence in the government uh, consistently. We're going to continue to do so. Uh, the timing of, of, that, uh, of that change uh, is, going to, is going to depend on, on uh, how long uh, the NDP liberal uh, collaboration continues. Um, but it, it becomes, I think, quite striking how there's this disconnect because the NDP 
um, they are trying now to criticize the liberals because they see how unpopular what they're doing is. But they, um, but they continue to give them support. So they say, why are you doing this? You're, you're doing all these things wrong. You're not, you know. And then they go and vote confidence in them, right? So they're, they're talking as if they've lost confidence. They're voting as if they have, have confidence. Uh, conservatives are, are voting and clearly stating that we don't have confidence in the government and it's time for change. Thank you very much, uh, MP Gardner Genius. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Great to be with you. Views, you just uh, watched my conversation with MP Gardner Genius. Download Tag TV apps on Apple, Android, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.